Hi everyone, I'm Drag King Flair, and I'm supposed to be there in the flesh with all of you at the Glad Day Bookstore for the Laboratory of Feminist Memory number three. But unfortunately, due to world situation, we're going to be doing this remotely. So I've made a video just for you. Today, I'm going to share with you what I was going to share there, and that is the history of the Toronto Drag Kings. Did you know that in 1995, Toronto formed its first Drag King troupe, and they were brought together by Joy Lachia and Rose Perry. At their first meeting, amid mustache and wig horror stories, the Drag Kings constructed their mission statement. The Greater Toronto Drag King Society was founded to mobilize women with an interest in drag, be they female to female or female to male characters. We attempt to deconstruct gender and satirize extremes in male and female gender roles behavior and stereotypes. And that is a picture of Gumbo and Susie Richter as Sonny and Cher. One of the other really cool things about the Greater Toronto Drag King Society is right away they started off as gender benders. That's right. This is Man Murray. There they are on the Clay Magazine from 1995. They were featured in Breakfast Television and they even got to perform with Carol Pope and Lorraine Sagato. But one of the coolest things that they did was they gained attention of academic, now associate professor, Bobby Noble. In both Bobby Noble's books, The Drag King Anthology, co-written by Donna Troca and Kathleen Lebesco, as well as their other book, Sons of the Movement, FTM's Risking Incoherence on a Post-Cultural Landscape, Bobby Noble records their first experience seeing the Greater Toronto Drag Kings at El Cavento Rico, June 29, 1995. The performers were equal parts campy, sexy, outrageous, raucous, and utterly tenacious. The crowd was whipped into a kind of queer frenzy, and in a bar designed for drag queen performances, lesbian public cultures were permanently transformed. Wow, they definitely had an impact. But what happened? The second wave, the fabulous Toronto Drag Kings, emerged as waves do at the end of the first wave. With the emergence of this troupe, Drag kings are disidentified with the lesbian culture, even though they perform in lesbian context. What begins to emerge instead is an entirely different set of relationships marked by affiliations with both gay masculinities and trans masculinities. That's right, that's a picture of me. That's what I brought to the drag king scene of Toronto. Gay masculinities. <laughs> the Fabulous Toronto Drag Kings was a monthly show and our format was that it was open to new performers every time, so if you wanted to try it, you could come and give it a go. Some of our highlights included being in Trade Magazine, Siren Magazine, the Toronto Star. Here's a picture of us from our little McLean Magazine article. Life is such a drag. Oh, and we were on Maury Povich. And in fact, if you look up, that picture is an actual picture from the crew that was on that episode. Fudgy Futaj from San Francisco, who to this day produces the San Francisco Drag King Contest. We also have Deb Dirk Pierce, myself, Jesse James Bondage, and Dread, one of the greatest gender performers of our times. Then we also have Cooper. Cooper was on the cover of the Drag King book. After I left Pope Jones in 2002, Jesse James Bondage picked up the reins along with Mitch and Stu and created Big Daddy Kings. Out of that came King Size, which was an all plus size troupe. And also in 2002, Brian Bedside Manor created Kiss Method Kings and started along with Matt Flo, Toronto's first weekly drag king show, which happened at Cruise and Tango's on Wednesday nights. In 2002, drag kings exploded across Toronto. I had started a show with Christopher Noel and Deb Dirk Pierce called United Kingdom, which was Toronto's first international drag king show. This happened at Buddies in Bad Times, both in 2002 and 2003, and very proud to say, we sold out. In 2003, Boys Will Be Boys is created by Matt Flo and produced by Skylar Rocket, where they then change it to Gender Fucked, the Gender Performance Cabaret, produced by Skylar Rocket and Embrim Rocket at Sneaky Ease. The first time Toronto Drag Kings marched collectively in Toronto Pride was 2005, and that was because of Justin Zaz. Then in 2006 and 2007, yours truly, along with Fluffy Souffle, created Insert Pronoun Here for Toronto Pride, which was an international gender performance showcase. 
In 2007, Color Me Drag was created by Milo to Milo, who brought together a team consisting of Trisha, Chase, Dainty Box, and Sammy Samosa. This was Toronto's first all people of color burlesque and drag showcase. Also in 2007, Good Handies hired Brian Bedside Manor and Tyler Uptight as house kings, and they were to put on as many drag king shows as they could possibly create. So there was like a drag king show at Good Handies almost every night of the week. Then they had the Mr. Good Handy competition in 2007. I won't lie, I signed up. I won't lie again, I won. But you know what I did? I couldn't help but notice how amazing everybody was. So I turned around to my fellow contestants, it was Wolfer Down, Brighter Gently, Holden, and Justin Zaz, and said, hey, you want to form a group right now? They said yes, and the Mr. Good Handies were born. Then they held the Mr. Good Handy competition again in 2008, to which Johnny Hartfelt won. And also at Good Handies, we had Degenerate, produced by Brian Bedside Manor, Wicca, and Johnny Hartfelt. And I think the name speaks for itself. Here's a great slide. We have Color Me Drag, their flyer for their Sunday, December 14th show at Buddies and Bad Times, 2008, which has Sammy Samosa and Milo to Milo. We have myself as Mr. Good Handy in 2007, the Yesman logo, and as well as the Toronto Drag Kings, Kenny, Tyler Uptight, Cameron, and Chase Manning. And they created the Toronto Drag Kings number two, and the Toronto Drag Kings took over zippers and brought the Wednesday Night Drag King shows with them. In 2013, I asked fellow performers Titus Androgynous, Brian Bedside Manor, Spencer Money, and Maximum Capacity if they would like to form a collective called the Yes Men. And the Yes Men lasted for about three years in Toronto, where we did this kind of drag king musical style of drag, where we really did kind of in-depth storytelling, like Game of Kings and Down the Rabbit Hole which we did with Platinum Productions. But in 2014, I had one of my proudest moments as a Drag King producer, and I produced World Class Kings for World Pride. After the Yes Men, Spencer Money in 2017 teamed up with Pretty Ricky under Pretty Money Productions and created Kings and Classics, which is now produced by East King Productions. Pretty Ricky and East King Productions also produces Embrace, an all-ages, trans, and queer-friendly open mic at the Glad Day Bookstore. Zaki Lime came on to the scene with House of Kings at the Glad Day Bookstore and does multiple shows there. House of Kings brought in Color Me Now, which is produced by Nesta Brown. In 2019, Fluffy Souffle teamed up with Baby Majora and created Fuck Shit Up, a trans and non-binary cabaret. I also created a show a year ago at the Gladstone Hotel called Drag King Decades, a tribute show to male impersonators and drag kings through, well, the decades. Our history is dense, and there hasn't been a moment without a drag king show in Toronto since 1995, something we should all be really proud of. I want to do a call out to some of the great things that have been happening right now, including Rebel Jen winning Absolute Vodka's Emperor Ball Number no. 2, a trans and non-binary drag house consisting of Alexander Brandy, Baby of Majora, Newfound Lad, Captain and Zaki Lime. I want to say thank you to CBC's Canada's a Drag, featuring drag artists across Canada in video vignettes, including from Toronto, Gay Jesus and MX Wolverine. And I want to say thank you to the reality TV series Drag Heels, and for season two, features drag king Cyril Cinder from Ottawa with guest appearances from myself and Titus Androgynous. I want to say thank you for watching a little bit of Toronto drag king history and I really want to thank the Laboratory of Feminist Memory for having me and to share with all of you what I've learned over the years. I love this art form. If you've ever had an interest in doing drag, please try it. House of Kings has an open drag night and I hope to see you on the stage.